Welcome to the video, you're listening to Phil of Philby Gaming. And as you can probably tell from the thumbnail, we're looking at the times that Red Dead Redemption 2 reminded us of its 2010 predecessor, the original Red Dead Redemption. This game was a classic, and it's good to see that Rockstar Games chose to take us on a bit of a nostalgic trip with these small references. If you enjoy what you see today, be sure to hit like, subscribe, turn on notifications and share with friends and family or anyone you may feel would be interested in content such as this. And please be aware, there will be major spoilers ahead for both games. With that being said, let's get in to what we came here to see. 7 References to Red Dead Redemption In the town of Blackwater, normally accessible in the epilogue of the game, the player can find a total of six scribblings sprawled across the area. They can be found in any order and each one noted down in the journal. Collecting them in the order shown is the easiest way to solve these cryptic clues. Players may quickly recognize these scribblings as Aztec year symbols. If we look at one of the lines of writing and cross-reference the numbers with the Aztec calendar on screen, it produces the following numbers in order. Using a traditional polybias cipher, we are able to translate the scribbling using the following method. If you pair each number with this letter using the polybias, each pair will represent a letter. We'll begin with the first two numbers, 1 and 2. We use the left-hand column first, then the top column. So number 1 on the left, combining where it meets number 2 from the top column, gives us the letter B. Next in the scribblings are the numbers 3 and 1. From the left 3, meeting the top column 1, gives us the letter L. I'll leave both the journal notes and the Aztec year calendar image on screen for a moment if you wish to pause, grab a pen and paper and decipher the remainder yourselves. Using this method to translate all 6 scribblings in the correct order will reveal the following. Blessed are the Peacemakers, Iotiotl. Players of the Timeless Undead Nightmare DLC will recognize Iotiotl as the name of a major character, an Aztec being who appeared in human form throughout the game several times. Also, Blessed are the Peacemakers is engraved on the headstone of John Marston, and it's the title of a mission in Red Dead Redemption 2. Finally, the green mask that was originally stolen from the catacombs of Escalera, in turn causing the populace to become the undead, can be found upon a shelf behind the counter of the saint Denis pawnbroker, as a nice nod back to the Undead Nightmare DLC. As the story of Red Dead Redemption progresses, John Marston finds himself in Mexico, still on the trail of his former gang members. Upon his arrival, after dealing with the local thugs, he's introduced to a former famous gunslinger, Landon Ricketts. The actor who portrayed the gunslinger was one Ross Hagen, a film and television star. Tragically, Mr. Hagen passed away to cancer around one year after the release of RDR. In Red Dead Redemption 2, Rockstar Games have paid homage to the actor in multiple different ways. Firstly, in the town of Armadillo, behind one of the buildings near the sheriff's office, the player can find Landon's likeness upon a cigarette card, part of the famous Gunslinger's collection. Issue number 132 of the Wild West Heroes collection, titled Mexican Ballad of Blood, also features Landon Ricketts, in a heroic tale of his old days as a shootist. This can be found at the Downs Ranch, southwest of Valentine. In the Grizzlies East, Mount Hagen is named after the deceased actor, in memory of the man. And finally, nearing the start of the Horseshoe Overlook chapter, at the Sheriff's Office in Valentine, Lantern Ricketts is referenced in a cutscene. So, what is it you need? Why don't you have a look at that poster on the wall over there? He's a low-down huckster. He's been poisoning folks with his miracle cure from here to Ansburg. Killed more than Landon Ricketts without even pulling a trigger. Gets some kind of sick satisfaction out of it. It's nice to see that Rockstar would pay tribute in a manner of ways to such an excellent character of the Red Dead Redemption series. 
in almost every game released by any developer, there's always going to be bugs and issues, and Rockstar Games would be no different. In a YouTube video uploaded shortly after the game's release, content creator Where the Boots showcased a hilarious game glitch titled The Incredible Donkey Lady. In this video, we can see that the character model for one of the females has had her face replaced by a donkey. And not only that, John Marston is able to ride around on the NPC as if she were the animal itself. The clip went so viral that it was impossible for Rockstar to ignore. In the southern regions of Red Dead Redemption 2, at Chola Springs in New Austin, there's an abandoned farm known as Two Crows. Towards the north of the land, tied to a mill, is a replica of the infamous Donkey Lady mishap from the original title, dressed in the same blue skirt and white top, even with the skull of a donkey. When inspecting, John will make a note in his journal with the following caption. Who was this poor thing? Who would do such a thing to any creature? Even though the original problem was a fault in the coding by Rockstar Games, it's nice to see that they are able to poke fun at themselves and be the butt of the joke. During his time in the world of Red Dead Redemption, John will meet a strange man. This man, who never reveals his name, tasks the player with multiple dilemmas which will affect their honor rating. The strange man seems to know all about John Marston and his time with the Vandalin gang, even referencing the death of Heidi McCourt, the girl who was killed on the Blackwater Ferry heist. Many believe this character is an apparition of some sorts, possibly a deceased relative of John, while others believe that it's either a god or the devil himself, or just the imagination of John, but it's all speculation. In their final encounter, John decides to try and eliminate the strange man, only to find that his bullets have no effect. In the world of Red Dead Redemption 2, there are several references to this man. Firstly, he appears to have a home in the bayou known as Bayall Edge. Inside the home of scribblings, such as this one reading, the water is black with venom, meaning the black water ferry heist, and also this one stating I know you, which is the title of the stranger encounter with the man in the original game. In the center of his home is a painting of the man, which progressively changes over time, revealing a more clear picture. To the south, in the town of Armadillo, one Herbert's moon owns a general store. Upon visiting, John notices something behind the counter. Who's that? Uh, I don't know. It's just a little portrait somebody gave me once. I always quite liked it. Why? No reason. Just seemed familiar. Anyway. He is referring to the framed picture of the strange man. At the beginning of Red Dead Redemption, while on a hunt for Bill Williamson at Fort Mercer, John is gunned down by his former brother-in-arms. Left for dead, he is luckily rescued by a passerby, Miss Bonnie McFarlane. The pair form a strong friendship over time, with Bonnie seemingly hoping for something more. Bonnie McFarlane seems to be unlucky when it comes to love, as she's had a few failed relationships in the past. In the world of Red Dead Redemption 2, there's an NPC interaction that can spawn in a multitude of places. I found this one on the beaches of the Dakota River, just south of Horseshoe Overlook. There lies the body of a man, and when attempting to loot him, the player will have the following interaction. Whoa, I thought you was already gone! Tell her! I never stopped! The letter that we find on the man is addressed to Miss McFarlane, showing us that this poor soul was one of her former relationships. If you wish to read it in full, I'll leave it on screen for a moment for you to pause. This isn't the only reference to Bonnie in RDR2. When playing in the epilogue as John Marston, we can visit her family ranch. The following conversation occurs. I'm farming for some other fellow. I had some bad luck on my place. Fella here had some bad luck himself. Him and his family got hit hard by the sickness. 
Him and his daughter went off traveling, trying to deal with the sadness, I guess. Traveling, huh? Lucky them. <clears throat> I guess. Pretty good pay for me, though. After arriving in Mexico, John can trigger another stranger mission titled Daedalus and Son. In this scene, we are introduced to one Charles Kinnear, an inventor with a strong interest in replicating the flight of birds and applying it to humans. A colourful character who's very enthusiastic, he informs the player that he needs help in collecting supplies for this project, but is unable to leave his post, fearing it may either be sabotaged or stolen. After returning the items and waiting a few in-game days, Charles Kinnear's aircraft is ready and we get to witness it in action, although not all goes according to plan. During the epilogue portion of Red Dead Redemption 2, a former crashed airship can be found in the deserts of Chola Springs. Closely inspecting this site, players will notice on the tail the marking of Charles Kinnear has been printed. With the epilogue being set in 1907 and the events of the original being in 1911, this indicates that Mr. Kinnear has been at this for some time. During our playthrough as John in Red Dead Redemption 2, while still on Pronghorn Ranch, there's a mission titled Jim Milton Rides Again. The ranch owner, Mr. David Geddes, is having troubles with the neighbouring Hanging Dog Ranch, who wants ownership of his property. Their ranch is owned, operated and protected by the Laramie Corporation, also referred to as the Laramie Gang or the Laramie Boys. After several failed attempts to muscle their way onto Pronghorn Ranch, they decide to launch an assault. In turn, after John, among others, defends their home, a counter-attack takes place. John Marston, Tom Dickens and a ranch hand called Abe head on over to Hanging Dog with the intention of clearing it of enemies. After the firefight, John finds himself in the barn, where he dukes it out with their lead henchman. The henchman whips out a stubby shotgun, attempting to kill John, but it's deflected in a pretty badass scene. Retrieving the weapon from the ground, John takes aim at his adversary in a somewhat familiar manner. If you recall back to the cover art of the original Red Dead Redemption, you will notice that both the illustration and the moment in this scene are identical. This is a sign of John Marston's development from his days with the gang to the character we come to know and love in Red Dead Redemption. There are no doubt more than seven references to Red Dead Redemption in this title, and if you know of any that you believe some players may have missed, be sure to let us know in the comment section below. If you wish to get in touch, you can do so via my Instagram, that's at philbygaming. Thank you all for watching, you've been listening to Phil, and I'll see you in the next one.